Remember to like and subscribe. Hey, how's it going? This is Jay with Kinetic, and this week I'm going to show you a cool trick using your onboard RTA, ballistics, and cursor to level out problematic tracks. Here's the setup. You are getting tracks from either a graphics department or maybe a playback op, maybe even backing tracks, who knows? They're all coming down the same line to you and you haven't had time to do a proper rehearsal, you haven't had time to level them out, make notes, or adjust game levels. So how do you level them out? I know what you're thinking. Compressors and expanders all work together to control dynamic range. Well, within reason. If they're just off the charts, you gotta have a way to level that out so your audience's listening level is the same. If the track comes in really hot, you need a reference to bring it down. If the track is really quiet, you need a track to bring it up. Meters work great, but meters aren't always the quickest and most effective visual tool to do that. And for that reason, I'm gonna show you a trick today. I'm gonna show you a practical application followed by an experiment proving the accuracy of this technique. And we are about to begin. Can everyone please take your seats? Thank you. The purpose of this demonstration is to show you what it's like to get multiple different signals with multiple different gain values on the same channel. I'm using the console's built-in RTA, ballistics, and cursor function all together to give me a visual aid to mix and level to. After I show you a couple examples in an experiment, I'm going to dig in deeper on how I got to this point. But basically, the horizontal blue line on the RTA you're seeing is my visual aid. So, we are going to call this horizontal blue line our audience's listening level. Now, I'm going to purposely send multiple signals into the same channel with vastly different voltage levels. And then, I'm going to use that visual aid to kind of keep everything in line. to resume our program. Please check your devices and take your seats. Thank you. Next, I'm going to do a quick experiment to test the accuracy of that cursor and the ballistics. By the way, ballistics is a weighted average over time of the RTA you're viewing. Now, to prove this in a logical sense, I've routed an oscillator to a fader, and I've routed that fader to my stereo bus. And right now, we are going to watch our SPL meter, and this is going to be weighted. This is going to be C weighted. So. Go here, same conditions as we had before, same conditions that we were using to mix. This time, I'm going to introduce an oscillator. Oscillator on, and roughly minus 18 there. This is when we're in, oscillator is running. Now I'm going to tag this line, fade it out, and then I'm gonna to mix to it again and we should be reaching the same SPL value every time I fade it in. So pass number one. And if I look at the SPL meter, I'm hitting about 84, 84.5. Look like 84 dB, 84 and a half. And trying this again, let's see where I land. And I'm hitting the line right there, 
Meter says 83, 83.5. So Just with me doing it, solely looking here. I'm not looking at this guy. I'm not trying to cheat. <laughs> it was 83, I think. Now doing it again, just looking there. And a third time for good measure. And I'm pushing the fader up. I'm hitting the blue line. And the blue line is telling me 84.5. So all three passes are within one dB. We could consider this experiment sound. Now I'm gonna show you how to set this up. As always, let's start off with making our user defined keys. And I always have my home button as 11 and some bookmarks for nine and 10. Bookmark number nine is a quick way for me to jump to this if I need to make any edits later on. And number 10 is a quick way for me to access my custom fader bank. So, back at our home menu, today I'm going to teach you guys the ballistics and cursor trick when fading in and out different videos. So, meter, and it usually starts here, so boom, and you want to click RTA, and everybody's used to seeing this, so I, I want to show you what it looks like first. Nothing select, you're not going to see anything. I'm using my stereo bus for the purposes of this video, so I'm going to monitor. Stereo bus left and right are equal, so it doesn't matter which one I choose. I have music routed to the stereo bus, and when I fade it in, you're going to see it jump. Now, if you look, and I'm going to mute this real quick. So, you guys. I want you to look at it more than listen to it. So you're seeing it jump right now, right? The data is all kind of crazy. So ballistics, if I turn ballistics on, I have a weighted average. This weighted average can be chosen between fast and slow. If I choose slow, I'm taking a weighted average over a greater amount of time, thus less reaction on there. If I click fast, I'm getting an average over a faster amount of time. So the RTA is gonna react a lot quicker. I usually go with slow, that way everything's kind of slowed down for me and nothing's jumping around too crazy. I usually go on and slow, and this is a one second weighted average that I'm looking at here. So it's much easier to digest than if ballistics are off. Again, that same track. So we turn ballistics on, I get a weighted average. Next thing you're going to see is cursor. This is a visual aid for us. And what I do is we are going to set peak hold on. And we are going to clear it. Exit. Clear it. Turn our cursor off. Now we're going to Turn P called on. Kind of see where this one's coming in. The song is over. And now I can see where my trace is. I'm going to take my cursor on and I'm going to kind of go to the top of that. Right there. Then we're going to clear P cold. Now, again, same track. With this on, I'm going to fade it up. Fade this up until we hit that intersect point on the line. And just for the sake of showing you guys this, we're going to say this line is where we want our audience's listening level to be. If you look at my meter, I'm hitting roughly minus 18 anyway. The channel is leaning heavy on the right. Panning is centered, so it's the song that I'm playing. And if I wanted to be completely accurate, I would pick the greater of the two when it comes to panning, and I should have been monitoring the right channel here, but you guys get the idea. Now you may be asking yourself, how come you're not using Q override? 
Well, Q override works great, but this is going to give me a pre-fader. So I hit Q, and now this is directly from the preamp on the channel I've selected, where I'm monitoring outputs right now. I'm monitoring output buses. So, so I want to give you a real world example. I'm going to rapid fire. Looks like seven or eight tracks. Resume our program. Please check your devices and take your seats. Thank you. Remember to like and subscribe.